and in the whole event, then you will have the opportunity to close the Wombat 2021. And um, his, talk, his talk is Abstract Convexity on Duality Theory of Compositive Minimization Problems. Please, Trent, the, full, the flow is with you. Okay, thank you very much for um, giving me a chance to give the talk about my work. So um, my, my work is on abstract convexity on duality, duality theory for composite minimization problem. And this is the joint work with um, Professor Eva Peknachuk. Okay, so first I will give some motivation about my work. Um, it's based on the concept of abstract convexity uh, in reference of uh, Jayakuma and Rubinov. And then uh, is uh, for proving zero duality gap for infimal convolution on the paper of Abu and Regina. Um, and also interesting in the relationship between the conjugate duo and Larang duo, which is uh, the work of Ednachuk and Siga. And by on this, uh, we generate to a more general problem, which is the composite problem, where you have the sum of two functions, where f and the other function is gl, which is a composite function. So the plan of my um, presentation is that uh, first we will introduce some definition of uh, struct complexity, uh, and then we will uh, introduce the conjugate duo for our main problem, how to construct a dual. And next we will rule weak duality and zero duality gap for the conjugate dual. And next we go to the strong duality for the conjugate dual. And finally, we will state some relationship between the uh, conjugate dual and Larang zero, uh, Larang dual. So first you will the definition, some, some definition about the abstract complexity. So here we consider the last of uh, of uh, uh, elementary function to be uh, a real value function with close on the addition of constant, and we consider x to be uh, an empty set, and the function is pi convex. It can be represented as supremum of uh, supremum of phi x, where phi is smaller than x. And then uh, we also introduce the, the definition of phi conjugate function, which has from uh, like this is similar to uh, the definition in the classical convex case. And similarly, we also define the epsilon sub differential. So here uh, we also introduce a useful inequality, which is young Fanke inequality. So it, uh, function phi belong to the subradian of f x zero if it satisfies this inequality. And here we also give uh, an example which is related to the classical convex case. So here we consider the class of function phi a for a is fixed, the class of quadratic function. So if f uh, is FSC rubber and this is phi convex, so depend on the case of a, if i is, is equal to zero, then the class of phi is a phi, a phi function. So in this case, uh, f is convex, f is zero, if and only if f is phi convex. So if i is greater than zero, then this is strongly convex. So for definition, uh, formal definition, you can see in the book of post scan compact. And if i is smaller than zero, then this is called weakly convex function. Mm. Okay, next we also introduce uh, by the notion of by conjugate function, which is uh, taken as a supremum over phi. And this is a, a well-known theorem where if the function equal to its pi conjugate, then this is phi convex. And also define the, the phi convexity at one point, if it's satisfied at this point only. <laughs> okay, so next we introduce our main problem, which is the composite minimization problem. So here we uh, f and g is defined on two different space, x and y, and l is just an operator, and 
phi and psi uh, the set of real value function which is used to define the abstract complexity of uh, f and g respectively so uh, here we will uh, construct the dual conjugate dual problem first we will perturbate the primal problem to introduce this uh, perturbation parameter y and then we try to uh, introduce another function which is coupling function which has a form like this and yes with coupling function we can calculate the c conjugate uh, which is taken as supremum over x y of c minus theta here and then the dual problem will be defined at the supremum of minus conjugate theta uh, at zero and psi, which uh, we can write explicitly as sum of supremum and infimum of uh, psi L plus X minus the conjugate of G. So this is our uh, conjugate dual problem. And the, so here there is no, uh, uh, no, no uh, condition apply on fine side yes so we only have this given this form but uh, for example if we assume that um, so minus psi l belong to phi or psi l belong to phi and phi is symmetric and we have a better presentation of the dual problem here uh, if we just assume that the function psi l is phi convex then it can be written at the supremum of uh, phi and we can have this uh, inequality. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the equal sign here. It is also similar to, to, to this problem here above. Okay, next, uh, we are discussed about zero duality gap. But first, we uh, reintroduce to uh, Brimo and the dual problem. And here we have the quick duality for our conjugate dual. We see that the primal or way greater or equal to the dual problem. Uh, so because there, there is minus size, so uh, size is uh, reverse here. Yeah. And then we will rule uh, some result for zero duality gap here. So here we consider uh, our in our setting, just general setting. So for for every epsilon, there is it um, epsilon and psi belong to the subradian of GL epsilon, such that zero belong to the subradian of F lot psi L. Then we have the zero duality gap, and even more these two um, statements are equivalent. We also notice that uh, not that this uh, theorem is equivalent to the theorem we find in this paper of Habui. Uh, in the case of two function and our operator L is identity. And the idea, uh, the main idea of our work is like to, to shift zero instead of the, to distribute zero to uh, supreme IMG, we shift zero to the function of F plus psi L. But uh, here we only give another presentation uh, of our uh, zero duality gap where you can consider the case where phi belong to subradian of F and psi belong to subradian of GL. Uh, as long as they satisfy this um, system of inequality, then we have, have like zero duality gap for conjugate dual. But if we want to go back, uh, we have the, we want to have a equivalence and we need to assume more additional condition, which is condition C2 here. Uh, we told we treat not, not for any sign and phi, but only for the specific sign and zero. Okay, here we give uh, an example when in the case where the class of functions phi and psi are a quadratic function, this a and b is uh, negative. Uh, in this case, then we can, but we, go, we can uh, separate the quadratic term and the linear term. So, the result for the zero duality gap here is um, they are equivalent. So as long as they satisfy the uh, this inequality, then we have zero duality gap. And if we have zero duality gap, we have the, the first statement. 
Okay, so um, here is uh, another version where, uh, in the case where uh, it is an X such so that so uh, the first statement hold for all epsilon with that we have this system inequality here. Then we have a zero duality gap and we can say that X is an optimal solution to our primal problem. And again, to, to have the equivalent, we will still need the condition C2 is all for uh, psi and zero. If this psi satisfies this the property of infimum, yeah. Okay, here um, I will give a, a simple example to demonstrate the, the result of our zero duality gap. Uh, here we uh, consider to be in, uh, in R with F and G are convex and L is the identity. So here I define two different space function phi and psi. For phi is the quadratic function and psi is just linear. So I calculate the conjugate of f and g respectively. And I construct the primal and the dual problem because the function is uh, convex. Uh, oh, sorry. Because the function is convex, so the primal problem always has solution and similarly to the dual problem. So first, we, uh, we calculate the super radian of our function f and g and to check. And then we will find x, psi, and phi uh, such that they satisfy the system of inequalities. So it is satisfied and we have zero duality gap. So notice that in the first um, inequality, because it's all for, uh, for all x in R. So with this um, inequality, we can find that a equals zero and b plus c equals zero. So with this value of a, b, c, we can, the second inequality, a automatically satisfy. So, we, so apply our result and zero duality gap hole. And notice that um, when we plug in uh, this value of a, b, and c to the value uh, to the uh, young Fanke inequality for psi belong to the gradient of g and phi belong to the gradient of f, we get this uh, system. And by letting epsilon go to zero, we can calculate the p and c and x zero. And with the value of x0, we plug into the primal problem, we get this value. And for ABC, we put it in the dual problem and we always get the same uh, value. So um, so at this value of x0 is uh, our optimal solution, which also the zero dual uh, make the zero duality gap hole for the problem. So next we um, uh, go to strong duality where we mean that the, the dual problem had a solution. Um, it's based on the work of uh, Yakuma and Rubinov to do the, the additivity of the epigraph here. So we, here we uh, introduce the definition of epigraph for the conjugate function. And then we have the, the following. So if, um, the epigraph can be of uh, conjugate of a plus gl can be like uh, decomposed into two, whereas one belongs to the epigraph of uh, conjugate of f and the other belongs to the epigraph of conjugate of g, then we have the strong uh, strong duality, which means that zero duality gap whole and the dual problem has a solution. And uh, for the equivalent to happen, they uh, if the, the condition C1 and C2 had to be satisfied between the C, C, uh, C bar and any phi belong to capital phi, where C bar is the solution of the, of the infimum here. We also have another presentation where we don't need, um, we don't need condition C1 and C2, but we need at least additional condition on phi and specific phi and psi. So, and we have a better presentation of the epigraph here. Uh, here we can decompose 
a big wrap into a big wrap of conjugate f and a big wrap of conjugate of gl yep they are in the same space here and we have the strong duality so from one to two if uh, the two condition is, is satisfied so here we so here we uh, we put additional condition on phi and psi yes and similar to here so here we put condition on conjugate of g and g had to be smaller than cl for to go back to from from two to one we have a different condition so for first so the first condition is that if any pair of uh, phi and c belong to epigraph a blood g and conjugate if there is it the phi one phi two so that uh, phi minus psi l greater than psi one and psi l greater than psi two or we can just assume uh, that if we can find such the uh, act and phi belong to subreddition of g so that this inequality holds and we have of two to one from uh, strong duality to go back to the additivity of that graph. Mm, yes. So so next we will go to um, Larang dual. So we notice that in the our conjugate dual, we can uh, write the problem in this form. It has the form of supremum infimum. So if we define uh, our Larangian like this, then we have the Larangian dual. And then we can go back to our Larangian primal here. Yeah. With this in terms that the sum, the infimum of two functions have plus the pi conjugate of GL. So it's um so this is not the our, our original primal problem. It means that the Larangian primal is always smaller than our primal problem. And if uh, zero duality gap hold for the conjugate dual, so uh, it's always also hold for Larang um, dual. So, um, so now we're interested in uh, Larang duality. So we, uh, so we will use one of the property, which is a result produced by uh, Siga and Pegnatu, where they make uh, use of the condition is called intersection property to rule to have the zero duality gap for the Larang dual. So if there is some um, very alpha, which is the lower bound of the Brimo uh, Larangian Brimo, and there's it the phi one and phi two, so that they satisfy the intersection property, which is this one. Then they have the zero duality zero duality gap for the Larangian. So we also develop it to our problem. So, uh, so here we restate the theorem uh, for the conjugate dual. So if we have the uh, five belong to separation of G and zero belong to separation of F lot uh, psi L, then we have a uh, uh, conjugate zero duality gap, which means that also, uh, which means that the uh, Larang zero duality gap also holds so also we have from one to two and if uh, Larang Rimo equal to our original Rimo problem we have the equivalent between two statements uh, so from this uh, condition where the Larang Rimo equal to the original Rimo problem we can develop a stronger condition for example if if the Larangian Rimo has a uh, as satisfied this inequality, then it's also equivalent to the uh, zero duality of both uh, conjugate dual and Lagrange dual. And then it's also equivalent to uh, the condition of zero duality gap for the conjugate dual, which is psi belong to separation of G and zero belong to separation of A plus CL. <clears throat> and yes. Uh, so for uh, so that that is all my work and for possible future uh, I would like to extend our result to the final sum of the composite problem. 
And I also want to define a weaker condition to replace condition for C1 and C2. And also uh, want to develop a topological structure to prove the strong duality for uh, conjugate strong duality. But you define the, the quick tire, a quick close for the set of epigraph. And I think that's all for my talk. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dehan Tran. Please, any questions, comments? Unmute, unmute yourself and ask a question to the speaker. Yes, Hoa, please go ahead. Uh, hello, thank you very much for your very nice talk. So I just have uh, one question regarding the considering of weak star topology. Mm -hmm. So, because like uh, in your res current result, this you didn't consider any topological structure. So, do you expect anything that when you consider like anything that can you recover the standard convex case? Uh, you mean the so can you cover the yeah? So, uh, because there are many results in the con convex um, situation, like standard, not strong, mm -hmm. sorry, not standard, like conventional uh, convex analysis. That doesn't hold for abstract complexity if you impose certain um, topology structure. So, do you think is there any possibility, like anything that missing in your result? Um, yes, I am thinking about that. Like uh, for quick star topology. Um, so here is is a possibility. Because here you can see that you can decompose the graph here. So maybe if you um, uh, Define a topology here. Maybe it can work, but yeah. uh, to go back to the convexity on the uh, to define the topologies, um, I haven't think much about it. Uh, yeah. I mean, because without topology, the item one is too strong. Uh, name stronger yes, than yes. usual condition because we yes, need yeah. a weak star close here instead of uh, just um, yeah. So then uh, but, when you have that, then there's many things change with the, uh, I mean, of course that you have stronger results, like as you said in the uh, conclusions. It's possible, but like, um, uh, I still don't know how to define the topology uh, for mm -hmm. because they are in different space. So, and how to impose additional condition on space on F and G is mm -hmm. still, um, and yeah. The question. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I see. Yeah, it's look complicated. Yes. Yeah, it's it's actually yeah very complicated. Yeah. Thank you very much for your presentation. Yeah. Very Thank nice. You. Thank you. More questions? Comments? Just remember that after this this talk and the question and answers, uh, we will have some work from Alex to close the Woman Twenty Twenty One. But we have still time for more questions. Please unmute yourself and ask the question. Alex, do you want to ask a question? No, I am a listener. Okay. But thank you for the talk. This yeah. is my comment. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Uh, I have a quick question. Do you think yes. Tran, that there is some possibility to find some way to use this abstract convexity to solve mm -hmm. numerically some kind of optimization problem with a more large or another family of function which is not convex or not uh, conventional convex? Uh, so, so actually, this is uh, what I am trying to do right now. So I try to develop an algorithm for specific class of function, which is uh, not convex, uh, which is also quickly convex. But uh, the result is still uh, questionable. It's not very good. That's good. Okay. So uh -huh. they're going to get better by the next workshop. <laughs> yeah, true. I hope so. I hope so. Yes. Yeah, very positive. <laughs> You yes, might no, know, no. you have name, neighbors. Uh, in Minsk, <laughs> people are working in this area. They're using Lipschitz functions. Oh, yeah. It could make sense actually to, to establish some communication channel. Uh, 
Uh, uh, can can you introduce me to to them? Okay. Uh, Valentin, are you here? I know Valentin Gorakovic is working in this area. Eva definitely knows him. Okay. And uh, I think he's in the audience. I'm not sure whether he can use microphone or camera, but I see that he's in the audience. So it looks like he's now for me. Oh, Eva can now use your camera. Congratulations. <laughs> let's let's see the, the Nadia's uh, question, please. Yeah, I have a question. So it yes. relates a little. Oh, sorry. It relates a little bit to um, Rainier's question. So, what mm -hmm. do you think is the main obstacle to develop to develop such kind of numerical methods? So, I guess it's not easy. Otherwise, you would yeah. already present them, right? So, what, yeah. in your opinion, is the main obstacle? Mm, the main obstacle is like how do you find the class of function phi inside cap for phi inside because in um in the classical convex case they they are in the dual space so they they communicate well with the the variable x and phi yeah, you can go through x to and the dual but here we have a different class of function I mean it's on the completely different so i don't know how the so main question the, is how to the, communicate between this. Yeah. So the obstacle is um, how to uh, find this suitable class of basis functions, right? So that's mm -hmm. the main obstacle. Okay, yeah, okay. thanks. Okay, thank you. Any other question? True. Okay, if there is no more question, let's join me, please, to thanks again. Oh, Hoa, you have a question? Mm. Yeah, I just uh, have a follow up question with Nadia. So, in mm. your opinion or in your experience, what is the most potential class of functions that we, we should focus on? That, of course, apart from linear. Um, so, right now I'm working on quadratic function, and uh, in some cases, um, as you can see, like in some cases, work for uh, for proving zero duality gap, and mm -hmm. in some cases, it's not working. Mm -hmm. at all so um, so if we uh, if i um, generate to another kind of function for example uh, what you did in your work you uh, define um also quadratic function yeah um, but i i dropped the linear term because i realized that it's kind of it create a lot of um complication in computation because that class is too large that that, that is my experience so i want to narrow the class a little bit because like yeah it is provide more information but i'm not sure about your um like optical like the optical that you can see so now I'm just consider to be the general quadratic function and mm -hmm. yeah okay and yeah. thank you very much i'm really yeah, looking forward you. to your research <laughs> okay thank you okay if there is another question let's thank again to Hong. And please, uh, now Alex will say some, please, uh, Vera, if you can stop share recording. Why, do, why don't you want to record my words? I, I think that we will. 